We all want the happy, happy, joy, joy. The happy, happy, joy, joy comes later. Now it's time to do the Father's will. Now it's time to be in the place He wants you to be. Bless you, Lord. There are people who won't come to this church because it's a little far to go. But God said for them to come to this church. I'm not, I don't want anybody here that God didn't put here. So don't think I'm trying to get members or something like that. There are people who won't come to this church because they can't get out of bed. But then they want to know why God isn't working in their life. Why things are so bad all the time. Why are they so down? Why are they so miserable? Why this? Why that? I'm telling you, it's because of disobedience. Mm -hmm. Disobedience brings consequences. Those problems, those storms in your life are because of disobedience. You may not be disobedient to the extreme that Jonah was. Uh, that he totally ran away and tried to run away and tried to get away. But listen, disobedience is disobedience. Whether it be when God tells you to be somewhere and you don't be there. Whether it be God tells you to say something and you don't say something. Whether it be God tells you to do something and you don't do it. Whatever it is, uh, when God says for you to do a certain thing and you don't do it, that's disobedience. And there is a consequence. And, and I can't stress this enough. And I know you're all tired of hearing it, but I, I've got to keep repeating it. Uh, it. We have to understand. We've really got to get it ingrained in our minds and get it ingrained in our hearts, get it ingrained in our spirit. We have to understand this thing. It's not a game. It's not about getting stuff. It's not about you. It's not about your pleasure. It's not about your feel good. It's not about your material things. It's not about what you can come out of this with. It's all about God. That's right. It's all about God. And until a lot of us understand that, we're going to be like Jonah. We're going to be down in the dumps. We're going to be up here. We're going to be down in the dumps. We're going to be up here. We're going to be down in the dumps. We're going to be up here. We're going to have storm after storm after storm after storm. Mm -hmm. Worries and trials and troubles. Well, if I do this thing that you're saying, will everything go away? Nope. You still have tribulations. <coughs> but you'll have one who will carry you through Amen. them. That's right. You'll have one who will let you walk above them. You'll have one that gives you the mindset that you know what? It just don't matter. That's right. Because I got Jesus. Right. And yes, you can really live like that. You can. Been there, done that. Until you get your focus off of you, off of your problems, off of your issues, off of your insecurities, off of your doubts, and get your focus on Christ, you're never going to be in that place. You're never going to be in that place. Until you can do that. Listen, Jonah... And again, I want to stress this. Jonah was still a man of God. I'm not saying you ain't a Christian. Jonah was a man of God, a prophet, handpicked by God to go preach to this city where a whole city repented. He's still a man of God. But he had to suffer the consequences of his disobedience. We do too. So when Jonah didn't like what happened, he didn't go his way, he didn't want what he wanted, so he went out the path. God gave him this gourd so that he would have shade. Then he's all happy because... God did something for him. Hey. He wasn't happy that a city repented. But he was happy that he got a gourd. <laughs> Boy, Jonah thought, so are we. That's right. Amen. How much concern do you have for the lost in York? Mm -hmm. Now, how much concern do you have for your wallet? your cover, your automobile. Mm -hmm. We ain't no different That's right. than Jonah. Amen. So he went out there to pout. God gave him the gourd. 
Jonah was all happy. Then God sent a worm to eat the gourd. And the sun came up and withered it. Jonah's all mad, ready to die again. Lord, just take me home. It's such a miserable life. I don't have a gourd anymore. How, how can anybody survive without a gourd? I don't know, God. You might as well just take me home. This life ain't worth living if I don't have a gourd. And that's four things. We do the same thing. That's right. Amen. If I don't have a nice car, if I don't have a nice house, if I don't eat the good food, whatever, we fill in the blank. We ain't no different. So here's Jonah ready to die again because his gourd's gone. And God said, Dost thou well to be angry for the gourd? And he said, I do well to be angry, even unto death. I have a right to be upset. Look. My preacher told me all my life, if I was a good Christian and I went to church and I paid my tithes, I wouldn't have any problems. Mm. My preacher told me if I was a good Christian and I went to church and I paid my tithes, I wouldn't get sick. I wouldn't lose my job. I'd live in a nice house. I, I would tow down my life. So I got a right to be upset that I got to live without a gourd. Mm. That's us. Mm -hmm. Jonah said, yeah. I have a right to be upset. You took our gourd. Then said the Lord, You had pity on the gourd, for the which thou hast not labored, neither made it grow, which came up in a night and perished in the night. You get all upset about all these things that you have absolutely no control over, mm -hmm. that you cannot affect, that you cannot do anything about. It's the blessings of God that allow them to come on you to begin with. And if God take, chooses to remove some of those blessings or whatever the case may be, you've got no right to be upset. That's right. I'm going to tell you, if you've been saved, if you've been born again, and that's all God ever does for you. That's everything. If he don't give you a house, if he don't give you a car, if he don't give you a job, if he don't do anything, you've got everything. That's right. What right does any person who's born again have to be miserable, have to be upset? None. Absolutely none. But every single one of us is like Jonah. We want it our way. We want it our way now. And if it ain't our way, we're going to go pout. We're going to go cry. We're going to get upset. We're just going to quit. We're just going to give up, whatever. A lot of the things we're doing are not because our hearts are in it. A lot of the things we're doing are not because we love the Lord. A lot of the things we're doing are not because we want to please Him or, or give Him what He deserves. A lot of the things we're doing is so other people can see us. A lot of the things we're doing is because we think if we go through the routine, if we go through the rituals, uh, we're tricking God into thinking we're something we ain't. A lot of the things we do are habit. A lot of the things we do are because we've always done that. Uh, and a lot of the things we do are not because... It's what God would have us to do. Our hearts aren't in it. We need to get our hearts in it. We need to seek to please God. We need to seek to be obedient to God. God said to Jonah after all of this, You had pity on the Lord for which thou neither labored, neither made us to grow, which came up in the night and perished in the night. And should I not spare none of my great city, wherein are more than six or thousand persons that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand, and also much cattle? And just in my words, I'm going to put, give you what God showed me there. I worry so much about this comfort and this ease and this and that. That's what that gourd was to Jonah. It was comfort. It gave him shade from the sun. And we should worry so much about our own comfort and our own needs and our own well-being and, and all that kind of stuff. We worry about that kind of stuff, but how much concern do we give to the lost? How much attention, how much prayer, how much effort do we give to the things that God would have us to do? And listen, in your case, it could be something entirely different than anything I've said. But you understand, if it's something God has called you to do, something God has said, well, in the beginning of this, he said to Jeremiah, go do this. If God has said for you, go do this or go do that or go do the other thing, whatever it is, and your concern is more about 
what's in it for you or what you're going to get out, what's the result going to be, uh, how much praise am I going to get, how much applause am I going to get, how many pats on the back am I going to get, whatever. Hey, am I going to get the result I want? And if it ain't the way I want, then I'm going to be upset and I'm just going to quit and, and all this stuff. If we're going to be like that, then we may end up suffering the same thing that Jonah suffered. Even after he did what God wanted him to do, he was miserable. That man was miserable. Really read that. He could not get happy. He could not be happy. He had a brief moment. In all of that, the whole book of Jonah, he had about this much happy time. And that probably wasn't real happiness. Think about these things. If your Christian life is a whole lot more of, well, I might as well just quit, I might as well just die, I might as well just go, nothing works out, nothing's good. If it's more of that, then it is of joy that something's wrong. That's right. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you what God has put on my heart is wrong is disobedience. Mm -hmm. It's disobedience. Because when we are obedient to God, we're happy. It is a joy to serve God when you really serve God from your heart. It is a joy. Amen. There's nothing that can make you happier than serving God and seeing God work and seeing God move. If you're sold out to God. Right. If you're committed to God. Right. Amen. And I'm going to wrap this up, but I'm going to tell you. <clears throat> if you're not doing what you know and you know, Jonah knew he was wrong. He admitted it to the sailors. He said, this is my fault. God's punishing me. If you know you're not where God wants you to be, doing what God wants you to do, living like God wants you to live, uh, serving God the way he wants you to serve you, going to church like he wants you to go to church, uh, all those things, whatever it is in your life, if you're not doing that, then you are disobedient. And if you are disobedient to God, there is going to be a consequence. And I'm going to repeat what I said this morning uh, because God has put it on my heart again. There's going to be storms in your life. Mm -hmm. There will be storms in your life. You may get eat. And, and I just love this. That's why I keep repeating it. I love how God gave it to me. And whatever's eating you ain't going to spit you out till you get to the place God wants you. You can ask for help from everybody around you. We talked about that this morning too. Uh, Jonah said, this is my fault. You need to chuck me. They said, no. We're going to row to shore. So they tried their best to row to shore and save Jonah. But you can't beat God. You can ask for help from everybody. Everybody can pitch in and do everything they can for you. But you can't beat God. It ain't going to happen. And, and whatever it is in your life, until you start being obedient, you're not going to find joy. You're not going to find peace. You're going to have storm after storm after storm after storm. You might spend some time in the way. You might spend some time at the bottom of the earth, as Jonah said, with the weeds wrapped around your head. We have to understand. It ain't about going through the motions. It ain't about uh, uh, fulfilling a certain set of of rituals or rules or anything like that. It's about giving your heart to God and being obedient to God. Following the direction of God. That's the only thing that's going to bring true joy and true peace. You might get glimpses. Jonah got a glimpse. A little moment here, a little moment there. But you know there's more than that. You know there's more to this than that. You know God offers a joy and a peace that passes all understanding. Regardless of your situation, regardless of your Amen. circumstance. Right. You know that. <coughs> it's time to do something about that. It's time to just give up and be what God wants you to be and do what God wants you to do. Go where God wants you to go. Act how God wants you to act. Speak how God wants you to speak. I'm going to say it one more time and I'm done because if you don't, the storms are just going to keep rolling in. They're just going to keep rolling in. Every once in a while, you might get a gourd. But even when you get a gourd, the worm's going to eat it. 
And it's just going to be misery after misery after misery. You're going to be down in the dumps, down in the dumps, down in the dumps, problem after problem after problem. That's it. I'm going to stop.